So what's up everybody and welcome to your next C++ SFML 2.0 tutorial and this tutorial we're going to be learning about the UDP uh, sockets and uh, I've already got the code done a lot of people I know like when I type the code as I talk but there's a lot to cover this tutorial so um, I decided to write it beforehand now if you guys want the source code for this tutorial I will be posting it on my website now I might not be able to do it tonight and I might forget tomorrow so if I forget just let me know um, and I will put it up as soon as possible now um, to start this off um, I just include map and and conio uh, and uh, we already know this and we've changed this from TCP socket to a uh, UDP socket and I'll get back to that in just a minute and I made a map container that takes in a short and uh, an IP address so this is gonna be the port number this is gonna be the IP address and I just named the computer ID now before we even continue I have to explain the diff the main difference between a TCP and a UDP socket. Um, I'm not going to get too in depth into it, but basically, a TCP connection will uh, a TCP socket requires a connection between two different um, computers or between two different IP addresses or whatever you like to call it. A UDP socket does not require a connection. It is it is in fact connectionless, right? So it's not it's not bound to one connection. Now a UDP socket, whatever it is more lightweight and is faster than a TCP connection since it t than a TCP socket because it does not require a question. That uh, does a question. I mean a connection. Sorry. So um, the downside to a UDP socket is that whenever you transfer data, it might not transfer all the data. You might lose data, and it might not transfer it in, a, in the exact order that you sent it in. Now, uh, the reason why UDP sockets are valuable is that in real-time applications, uh, when you're updating, like, say, 60 frames per second, if you lose, like, data in four frames, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, right? And speeds is what, is what matters in those real-time applications. And that's why UDP, UDP sockets are more preferable in those real-time action uh, FPS-type games. Right, but enough about that. Let's continue on with this tutorial. Uh, so, um, this is from last tutorial. So we click S for server, C for client, and then this one it asks for a port number. Now, just to let you know, uh, you can multiple computers can be on the same port, but all their IP addresses have to be different. If one of the IP addresses is the same, it cannot be on the same port as another IP address on the same port. The reason being is that if you have a IP, two IP addresses that are the same that are on the same port, how is the computer going to know which one is sending and which one to receive data from, right? It doesn't know. So the ports, the ports have to be, and the IP addresses have to be uh, unique. So if you have, uh, t if you're running, say, this program on the, on the same computer, you have the server and the client on the same computer, the ports have to be different. But if the IP addresses are different, then you can put them on the same port. It's perfectly fine to do that. Okay? So once we get a port, then we bind the port. So remember when we use TCP listener? It's kind of, it's just like that, well, kind of like that, where it's listening for that port. So it's searching for anything in that port. That's what socket.bind does. Now I never explained this in the last tutorial, but uh, socket dot set blind is set blocking. The set blocking method or function, whichever one you like to call it, um, if it's it's set to true by default, and if it's set to true, uh, when when it's receiving data or something, if it hasn't received all the data or no data at all, then it's going to kind of pause at this section until it receives data. If blocking is at the false, then if, even if it hasn't received any data or even if it hasn't received all the data, it will still continue uh, continue traversing through the code, okay? Uh, so if our connection is a server, then I just made a random variable called answer. And we have, I made a local variable called RIP and a port. So when we receive data, the da the text we're going to receive or is going to be in the buffer. We have the size of the buffer, how much bytes are in there to the received, and we have our IP and our port. Now, why do we make new instances of, instances of IP and port? Well, this is the reason. 
like I said before, a UDP socket is connectionless, meaning it has no connection. So whenever we receive data, we don't know where, where we're receiving the data from. It could be from anywhere. We're not connected to an IP address. address. We're not connected to anybody. So we need to know where we're getting the connection from. So these two parameters, it returns the IP address that actually sent the data, and this returns the port where the data was sent from. Okay, so it returns these two values. So if we actually get a connection, then what we're gonna do, uh, if we receive a message or something, we're going to add to our map, and we're gonna add the port, and we're going to add the value for our um, our IP. Okay. So um, so yeah. So then, what we're going to do is that if it is a client, right? So uh, yeah, if we're on the client, then what we're gonna do is sorry pause it for um a second um so yeah so we're, we're gonna store uh, i lost where i was but we're gonna store uh the ip uh into our um into our map now note that if we have uh if we're say we have different ip addresses or we have mo and we have multiple clients and they're on the same port then we're gonna get an error for this because the key is in fact the same uh, so this isn't uh, the most efficient way to store it, but uh, don't worry, don't really worry too much about that. Uh, if you're gonna get an error, just put them on different ports. So what we're gonna do is we get an answer. So if we're still trying to receive more connections, then we'll put any value aside from A. But if we're done receiving connections, we'll put in the value A. So um, in our um, if in our, in our client, what we'll do is we'll get the server IP address, right? And I've just um, added in this code right here just to um, uh, block what I'm typing in my IP address just for safety reasons. Um, and then we're going to get our IP address and then we're going to send whatever text. It doesn't matter what we send. We just need to send something uh, to the IP. And I just set the default port to 2000. So if you're using this code, set the server's IP, um, the server's port to 2000. So after that, what we're going to do is if our connection is a server type, then we're going to get some text. Uh, and once we enter the text, then we're going to iterate through all of our map elements, and then we're going to send it to each one of our clients. Send the text to each one of our clients. And on the receiving end, uh, we're going to receive it, all the data, and then we're going to display that data uh, to our client screen. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is just run this right now. And I'm gonna run uh, two more windows. Okay, so this is gonna be the server, and I'm just gonna put S, and I'm gonna put the port number as 2000. Now, um, I'm gonna put C right there, and I'm gonna put this at 2001, because the IP address is exactly the same, so, um, yeah, um, I can't do it with the same um, port number. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you try to do it. It says failed uh, to bind socket to port 2000 because um, they have the same IP address. So I'm gonna put C, put, set our port number to 2001, and I'm just gonna enter my IP. Okay, so I've entered that data in. And now that I received a connection, uh, oh, I probably like inputted it wrong. Uh, so let me check this one more time. So I'm gonna put um, C for client, uh, port number 2001. It looks like my code is not working correctly. So I'm probably gonna have to pause this and edit Okay, I made an error. I just, uh, if I redo this, I just, I had a C N after it. Um, so sorry for that. So let me just try running this again. Uh, okay, so let's open two more windows. So I'm going to say S for the server. I'm going to put the port at 2000. I'm going to put C here, set it to 2001. And so let me enter this in. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, yeah, so that worked. Um, so I'm just gonna put any random value in there. 
and then in the next one I'm just gonna put C 2002 and so now if I go back to my server now I'm just gonna input the value a which means I'm done accepting it right so what I'm gonna do now is just type in this is coding made easy and as we can see on the receiving end we get it on the client side we get the message that we um, entered right uh, so uh, that is uh, how we can work with UDP sockets now I'm going to, I have this program on another computer a laptop right beside me so I'm going to be running this on the laptop just to show you uh, that it can run on other computers as well so I'm gonna make this computer the client so you can just see the message pop up uh, so um, just give me a second to set it up so I'm gonna set that computer to socket I'm setting up port 2000 right now and I'm gonna set this as a client and since we're, we have different IP addresses then I can set the port number to the same value right so set it to 2000 um, and the IP for that is so I inputted it I accepted it and now I'm gonna enter some text so Oh man okay so as you can see I clicked enter and we got this on the screen so um, that is it for this tutorial sorry if it was kind of long but I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching now you can work with UDP sockets so I uh, hope you enjoyed it don't forget to comment rate, and subscribe and bye for now